The history of HSBC is deeply linked to the history of Hong Kong. The bank and the former colony were born at the same moment more than 150 years ago. At the time, the British crown dreamt of conquering the Chinese market that was closed to Westerners. The first settlers chose the fishing port in Hong Kong as the base for their commercial offensive. It was a place known for piracy, known for disease, known for prostitution. And it was a place that you had to be careful about investing. Back in the UK or England, there was a song that people sang in pubs called, You Go to Hong Kong for Me. I don't want to go there, right? So you go there for me instead. The British began trading opium, destined for the Chinese market. Given the success of the drug, the emperor burns the cargo of the traffickers. London sends in its military fleet and triggers the Opium War. The Chinese capitulate, and the British gain possession of Hong Kong for 99 years. The British were controlling large parts of India, where opium was grown. And basically, the British realized that opium was something that people wanted, and they realized that they had a lot of opium to offer, right? So before opium really sort of took off, the balance of trade was in the favor of the Chinese. Once opium becomes such a big product, the balance of trade actually goes toward the British side. The opium trade has its golden age, and the settlers need a bank. They create HSBC, the Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking Corporation. The most notorious traffickers in the city, mostly Scottish, sit on the first board of directors. I would say that HSBC was not necessarily created by opium traders, but was by, created by traders who happened to be involved in opium. It's often been said about HSBC that much of its culture has derived from those Scottish origins, by which really what people mean, that's a polite way of saying uh, that they tend to be thrifty and they look after their money, and also hardworking and conscientious, the sort of classic Scottish qualities, really. These were practical men. They weren't intellectuals. Indeed, it was a bit like a as it were, like a regiment, had its own code, its own culture, looked at the outside world often with some suspicion. In Hong Kong, HSBC takes power. It prints the local currency, finances the construction of the city, and serves the interest of Her Majesty in the Far East. There were three or four great powers in, in, in that quite small place. And one, of course, was the governor, the, as, as appointed by the British government. Uh, and one was the chairman of the jockey club, uh, which was responsible for the horse racing. But a third great power was always the chairman of uh, HSBC. HSBC were always right there at the top, yes. Hong Kong continues to be the most important source of earnings and profitability for HSBC. If Hong Kong does well, HSBC does well. If HSBC does well, Hong Kong does well. HSBC has never changed its DNA. Formerly the Bank of Pirates, it continues to function on the dark side of finance. The only difference is it no longer operates only in Hong Kong. The bank has become a global empire.
HSBC nearly shut down. The fate of the bank was played out in the United States in 2012, four years after the outbreak of the financial crisis. We are here today to announce the filing of criminal charges against HSBC Bank for its sustained and systemic failure to guard against the corruption of our financial system by drug traffickers and other criminals and for evading U.S. sanctions law. The Minister of Justice accuses HSBC of laundering the money of the Mexican and Colombian cartels that control the trafficking of cocaine. Nearly 1 billion euros were said to have passed through its Mexican subsidiary before being recycled into the U.S. economy. Affiliates of drug cartels were literally walking into bank branches with hundreds of thousands, sometimes millions of dollars of U.S. cash in Mexico and putting it through the teller window, uh, sometimes in boxes that were specially designed to fit through the teller window. And the HSBC employees took it, they uh, deposited it, um, and gave the person a receipt, and never reported the conduct, and never stopped it. And that didn't happen once, it didn't happen twice. It happened systematically over the course of uh, about a decade. There was one occasion, uh, an individual walks into the bank with maybe three or four million dollars, and bank employees spent one full day counting it. <laughs> so that's just a few million. Imagine that multiplied by several hundred fold. And that's what 881 million represents. The investigation is overwhelming. Not only have bank employees worked hand in hand with criminal organizations responsible for thousands of murders, but their managers ignored all of the warning signs. The bank had been warned repeatedly and consistently by US authorities and by Mexican authorities. They also were told that they had recordings from drug lords um, that said that HSBC was the place to launder money. Well, London knew everything, and they, they just didn't care. The accusations are serious. The bank risks losing its license in the United States. The case may precipitate the fall of a company that employs 300,000 people on five continents and manages a sum of $3,000 billion. If HSBC were a country, it would be the fifth world economic power. <laughs> 